Atrial fibrillation, or AFib, is a heart condition that causes an abnormal speed and irregular beating of the heart. AFib causes an increased risk of stroke by having that irregular beating lead to blood clots that form in the heart, travel through the blood vessels, and hit the brain. Come watch as I talk to one of my patients with AFib about how to reduce their risk of stroke. It's good to see you after your recent hospitalization for atrial fibrillation. How are things going? Pretty good. I feel pretty good. Um, I just have one question. Uh, do I really need to be on this new medication, this blood thinner? Certainly on my agenda to talk to you about that today as well. Okay, good. That's, that's good. Yeah, so these medications are really aimed to prevent blood clots from forming in the heart and traveling up to the brain and causing a stroke. I certainly don't want that to happen. Well, me neither. Now, these medications to prevent blood clots are most appropriate for people who are at high risk of blood clots and stroke. And in fact, most people with atrial fibrillation are at high risk. But there are some folks whose risk is so low that they shouldn't be on those medications at all. Why? What is the risk of blood thinners? Well, it's the risk for serious bleeding. So if you fall or have an accident, the amount of bleeding if you're on a blood thinner could be greater and even life-threatening. That's scary. How do I know what's best for me? So every patient is different, so we use a scoring tool called the CHADS-2 scoring tool. Well, that's interesting. Go on. Yeah, so in that tool, we give points, and the more points you have, the greater your risk for stroke. So if you're elderly or actually greater than 75 years of age, you get one point. And you get another point if you have heart failure or hypertension or diabetes, and two points if you've had a prior history of stroke or mini stroke. Okay, I can follow that. So for you, you have your history of heart failure and that stroke that you had a couple of years ago, the mini stroke. And you can see that you have three points, which translates into a 6% per year risk of stroke. So if I had 100 people just like you, six of them over the course of a year would have a stroke. Wow, that's pretty scary. Okay, so if I do take the blood thinner, what does my risk come down to? Well, it's a good question. It comes out to about 1% per year. And what's the risk of bleeding from the blood thinners? Well, your risk for serious bleeding, that's one where you might need a transfusion or surgery or one that might even be life-threatening, is about 1% per year. So if you had 100 people who were on that medication, one out of 100 will have a serious bleed. For me, the benefit of taking a medication to prevent blood clots makes sense because the risk of stroke for me is far greater than the risk of bleeding from the medication. You got it. That's exactly right. Now, everybody's bleeding risk is different, which is why actually talking to your doctor about it is a really good thing. Is there anything I can do to decrease my risk of bleeding? It's the common sense things. Keep your muscles strong. You don't want to fall, right? So engage in activities such as walking or using a stationary bike or even yoga. Well, right? that's great because I'm really anxious to get back to my exercise routine. You know, just be smart about it and don't engage in any activities that might increase your risk for trauma or getting injured and bleeding from that. Okay. Okay. Now, some of these medications also you need to actually check the level in the blood regularly to make sure that the level is appropriate. Some of the newer medications don't have that requirement, however. So tell me more about these new medications. The studies do show that they work very well. Again, they don't have that monitoring requirement. Uh, whatever our final choice is, we have to make sure that we use these medications very, very carefully. So what do you say? I think I got it. My stroke risk is high enough that I should be on a medication to prevent blood clots. Absolutely. Strokes are one of the most devastating complications of atrial fibrillation. Talk to your doctor to see if a medication to prevent blood clots is right for you. For more information, you can visit acpfoundation.org slash AFib. I'm Dr. Doran Schneider, and this has been another tip to help you live a healthier life.